I'm Ryan F9 and these are five motorcycle tires to save money because inflation is a prolific pervert and we're all feeling the pinch. You wouldn't think an oversized eraser has that many frills to cut, but consider the $300 Michelin Road 6 with its micro-ablated sidewalls that mimic velvet. Oh, get behind me, Satan. Not this year. Then there's the Avon Road Riders, made by the tea-sipping gentry with six weeks of paid vacation. I guess that's not strictly necessary. We can find cheaper rubber that loses nothing of performance. In fact, these are better. First is the Dunlop Mutant. An unusual name, but I guess it's scaly and curvaceous, and to a child of the 90s, that can only mean one thing. To be fair, this tire inherited its moniker from the Sportmax Mutant, a supermoto tire built for the sliding game. See, controlling a slide is risky. Due to something called the grip-slip curve, a rolling tire has some friction, a slightly sliding tire actually has more, then more, then more, then suddenly… less. It's hard to feel this point of diminishing return but you'll know when you've hit it. That's why modern motorcycles are supercomputers, ABS, traction control, lean sensors. The modes know precisely how to hold this limit, or this one, or this one, whatever I select with my little thingy. What Dunlop realized is that these electronics largely control the rear. Our front tires are still managed by three pounds of meat. Maybe three and a half. So it's the front tire where we feel a difference. A revelation Dunlop calls DFF, Dynamic Front Formula. The formula is basically to throw all their dollars into building a stable front, assuming that secure analog feeling will free us to get goofy, whereby the computer just gets the most out of the rear. It freaking works. Dunlop recently released a super sport front that is so stable the technology trickled up to Moto America racing. The Mutant is my current favorite tire. Sorry. It's so confidence inspiring that I started riding my adventure bike like a supermoto. And my sport touring and my naked, my big bike, my little bike, it has 250 fitments. The wet grip is nautical, mileage is north of 20k, it's a beast on fire roads, it looks cool, and it's cheap! 100 bucks less than the Michelin. Dunlop could sell these to a jet ski. Of course, we'll need something chunkier for the trails, which brings us to the Kenda K784 Big Block. This is the Big Block Bible. See, you could build a street tire with lots of vertical surface area and not much lateral. And that would last a long time on pavement, but on dirt you're skating on shit creek. Or you could build a dirt tire. Not much vertical surface area, but a lot of lateral, so it paddles well off-road and roaches itself after a thousand miles of pavement. Or to make a 50-50 tower, we could just make the knobs really big. Wow, much engineering. Continental invented the block first, which is why they still charge $250 for TKC-80s. But Kenda can draw a square just as well. For 100 bucks less, I'd rather buy theirs. See, getting peg-dragging performance with half the contact area of a street tire requires rubber that is twice as soft, in which case our tire pokes the pavement with the stamina of a virgin and we're back to the dirt bike problem. But, 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 Kenda did use double soft rubber, and just compensated by making the profile extremely wide. It's a peculiarity of physics that more rubber dissipates more stress, even when it's located inches away from the contact patch. Think of it like giving force more places to go. And getting a few extra miles for free is like putting your lunch on the company card. It's extra sweet. Just don't use Kenda K784s if your swing arm is low on clearance. It is extremely wide. Or if you struggle to mount your own tires. All the extra rubber on the sidewall makes it stiffer than a weak old donut. <coughs> Next up is the Shinko SR999HD, which is not particularly an HD tire. 
Shinko just knows that one must write HD on any product remotely related to HDs, whether or not it's designed for HDs. Otherwise, the HD owners will worry the non-HD branded HD tire won't work on their HD HDs. HD. Religions aside, this is a long haul tire for any heavy touring motorcycle. The cash saver in SR999s is puncture resistance. See, a bias belt tire has some plies going this way, some plies going this way, and some more down the middle. Zoomed in, we're left with some pretty big voids for a nail to get its tip in. Meaning, I'm left waiting beside the Trans-Canada Highway for a 300-pound tow truck driver named Kenneth to charge me $148 for a rope plug and 30 minutes of terrifying conversation. For example. But the SR999 uses jointless Aramid, an absurd luxury on a budget tire. By winding the continuous strand of don't call it Kevlar, Shinko can precisely control the placement of each ply, and nailing these nexuses results in tiny triangles rather than gaping polygons. And because punctures generally budge between plies rather than cutting through them, and the holes are now smaller, we now have a carcass that is more resistant to puncture, and a wallet that is more resistant to Kenneth. The only downside is that Shinko kinda discovered how much they're worth. Last year, the SR777 became the best-selling budget cruiser tire in North America, so when the American importer asked Shinko to make the SR999, Shinko said yes, but we're going to charge $230. Now, if you're wondering how we get these inside the carcass shots, the setup looks like this. An Insta360 X3 mounted to a spinny thing on my wheel balancer. See, the camera body itself is rather small, and the lens is the widest, 360 degrees wide, enabling macro shots in intimate places. We never mind experimenting with our X3 because it's rugged. The touchscreen is tempered glass, it's waterproof to 10 meters. And Fortnite loves Insta360 sponsoring these videos because we buy their cameras anyway. In our kit, one of these replaces two GoPros and a fisheye lens. I like to measure the weight of a purchase by what it displaces, which is why I like Dunlop Sportmax Q5S. 250 bucks is typical for a track tire, but track tires are typically track only. So now I need a van to drag my thoroughbred to the circuit and stands and a generator all to power my warmers to use my $250 track tire. So Dunlop got the Sportmax Q5S DOT approved, allowing me to simply ride to the race. Only a Jenny won't fit on my Jixxer, so now I need the tire to heat itself? It's actually possible. And when a tire rolls, it makes a hysteretic loop. And since rubber takes more energy to load than it does to unload, we get this area of energy out in heat. Now, most carbon black isn't going to get past 40 Celsius on hysteresis, but Dunlop developed something they call Carbon R. Yes, that stands for racing type carbon, and yes, that's dumb. But it does have thinner arms on the polymer, and squishing the spaghetti monsters is more lossy. So yes, the tire does heat itself. No van, no stands, no generator. Just take the first four corners, you're up to 70 Celsius. Only thing to be wary of is the idiot brother. And Dunlop's Q5S is the one you want, while the Q5 is useless. And it tries to be more hardcore, but most riders, myself included, are not fast enough to get away with this without tire warmers. And by ditching the edge sipes, I'm not really brave enough to ride this hard on public streets either. Get the Q5S for the ride to race saver, and if you want to go even faster, just skip the Q5 and go back to slicks. And the van. Finally, for dual sports, we can put some deflation on inflation with a trials tire. Designed to be run at low PSI, the flexible carcass makes bubblegum grip. You cannot beat the way a trials tire conforms to roots and rocks. It's maximal surface area providing maximal grip on technical terrain. That's why trials bikes use them. And thanks to the wide footprint, they last twice as long on pavement. But even more compelling is how they last on dirt. Regular knobbies get 100% grip at 100% tread depth. 
50% at 50, 10 at 10, their effectiveness drops with wear. But because trials tires don't rely on sinking their knobs into the ground, I can go 100% speed on a 10% tire. Even geriatric hikers love these things. We share trails. There are bigger skid marks in their underpants than behind my motorcycle. Well, shit. We just nuked the entire knobby tire industry. Almost. See, Trials tires don't paddle well, so they flounder in the really deep sand, mud, and snow. I always get through, just never at race pace. The bigger downside is cornering. And this flat profile won't rail a turn in any weather. And on pavement, the soft sidewall can actually fold under and knot up. So you either resolve to take corners at the speed limit or suffer an undignified death at the hands of flubber. Our upshot is 4x4 level stability. You can stop upright on Trials tires, analyzing your lines like a Trials guru. It definitely changes how I ride, but after a year, I don't want to go back. Mine are Shinko Trail Pros, by the way, but any DOT-approved Trials tire will save you money. Dunlop Sport Max Q5S's will shave a van, stands, warmers off your track setup. Shinko's SR999 can save you from a costly puncture. Kenda's K784 is a knockoff TKC80 for $100 less. And the Dunlop Mutant is the coolest tire here. Thank you very much for watching, and thanks to Insta360 for sponsoring this video. If you happen to want a camera, click the link below.